I've done a lot of traveling in my life, probably more than most people. I wouldn't say the airport is my home or anything, maybe a hotel at best. The main reason for me traveling around so much is actually because of my mom. You see, I'm half Korean on my mom's side, meaning that the entire side of her family lives in South Korea. When my dad married my mom, he made a deal with my Hadabaji that him and my mom would visit Korea every four years. Because of this, I have visited South Korea four times throughout my entire life. Anyone who's traveled to a foreign country knows that it's a very weird experience. You have to sit still for 12 hours straight just to be plopped into a place you don't know, with people you don't know, who are all speaking a language you don't know. You just feel so out of place all the time. Everywhere you go, you just can't help but feel that everyone's silently judging you for being an American. I mean, if I wanted to be judged, I'd just go back to high school. I mean, at least my Asian genetics helped me look the part. One thing you need to know about visiting South Korea is that it's extremely humid here. Everyone thinks the heat is bad here in New Mexico, but imagine this kind of heat except you're always covered in sweat. You step off the plane and just get hit with the biggest blast of moisture. It feels like you're in a sauna all the time. How do people even live like this? And I thought Florida was bad. One of the toughest challenges when visiting a foreign country is always the language. You can never talk to anyone because they will not understand you. You walk down the city street and have no clue where the heck you are because you can't understand any of the signs. I mean, at least most signs in Korea have English subtitles these days, so I guess that's a plus. But not being able to understand anyone is still a huge problem. Thank God one of my cousins, Yudan, actually knew a good amount of English. She was my sister and I's savior. And I guess my mom was there too. I remember this one moment from my most recent trip. My family were all hanging out in our hotel room. My mom and one of her old friends were sitting down having a conversation and I was just chilling on the bed playing my Nintendo Switch. Suddenly I hear my mom and her friends stop talking so I glance up just to see them both staring at me. I swear that was one of the scariest moments of my life. Once they see that I notice them, they just giggle and casually return to their conversation. What the heck, mom? Y'all think you can just talk about me behind my back like that? To this day, I still don't know what they said about me. Another time, my dad's sister and I were lost in the subway. We had spent the entire day exploring the city and were trying to find our way back to the hotel. My dad was having a little bit of trouble figuring out the subway map, so he was forced to try and find help. My mom was with her sisters at the time, which means we had nobody there to translate for us. All out of options, my dad pulled up Google Translate, walked up to a lady, tapped her on the shoulder, and muttered some broken Korean. The lady turned around with a confused look, stared at us for a few moments, and then said, Sorry, I don't speak Korean. <laughs> oh man, what an idiot! <laughs> we all burst out laughing. My dad apologized to her, they had a lovely conversation, and she was able to point us to the subway that took us back to the hotel. Every country is different, and they all have their own traditions developed over many, many years. South Korea is no different. They have very different traditions than we do here in America. Let me just run through a couple of interesting differences I noticed on my visits. In Korea, chairs just do not exist and neither do forks. Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but during the many times we had dinner at my Hadabaji's house, we always sat on the floor and used either spoons or chopsticks. The table we ate on was low to the ground to compensate. I mean, yeah, chairs existed, but you wouldn't see them around the dining table. It's more like office chairs and lawn chairs. The only time I remember seeing dining tables that had chairs was at McDonald's an American restaurant. That was also the only time I remember a fork being given out. Even our hotel room didn't have any chairs, just a couple of mats. In Korea, you always take your shoes off before entering a house. Every house, apartment, or hotel room I entered in Korea had a small place near the door to take off your shoes before entering. I actually kind of enjoyed this. It gave me an excuse to kick my shoes off, plus it meant there wasn't a bunch of dirt being tracked around the house. I kind of wish we had this here in America too, but I already know that's not gonna happen. One thing that was made very clear to me was that nobody in Korea has short hair. Nobody. Even the boys had hair that was at least a couple inches long. I noticed this on my second trip to Korea when I was around six years old. Back then, my dad used to basically buzz cut all my hair off. I never liked it, but what was I gonna do about it? I was six. I thought I'd get beaten up if I tried to challenge authority. I had gotten a haircut right before leaving for the trip, which meant everyone was gawking over how short my hair was. Apparently, they just never knew that hair this short even existed because they all acted like it was the biggest thing in the world. I remember this one specific 
specific afternoon, my sister and I were taking a walk around the city with some of my Korean cousins, and they would just not stop touching my hair. And then they kept talking about how short it was. My sister found it funny, and a six-year-old me kind of enjoyed the attention, while also being very uncomfortable. Overall, my experiences with visiting Korea have been pretty positive, despite how much I make fun of it. There's a lot of cool stuff to see there, like Latte World, which is basically Korea's version of Disneyland, the beaches in Busan, and a mountain with a spring that you can actually drink out of. There are so many more stories that I could tell about my trips. Once when I was two, apparently we got stuck in Japan and had to stay the night. At least that's what my parents told me, I don't really remember. If you're thinking of visiting a foreign country, I highly recommend it. Sure, you may stick out like a sore thumb, and you'll be judged as soon as you step out the comfort of your hotel room, but the memories you'll take back with you are so worth it. The only thing I ask is that you do a bit of research on the traditions and the culture of that place before hurling yourself across the ocean. If my mom weren't there to teach me, I probably would have ended up disrespecting a ton of the locals. Also, get yourself a cousin that can translate everything for you. That'll help you not go insane.